Hey students, yesterday I gave you this assignment and wanted you to get started on it. And this is a pretty challenging assignment, so for today I'm going to give you most of the class period to work on this and try to figure it out. This is challenging because it com combines a lot of the information that we've done previously, namely ionic compounds and charges and putting things together. So to help you out, I'm going to go ahead and do this first row of substances and then encourage you for the rest of the day to do the rest of the rows. We're actually going to need this document soon because it applies to the next thing we're going to be talking about. So let's take a look here. We already have the first one done. This is a double replacement reaction where sodium carbonate and aluminum chloride go through a double replacement reaction. They're two mixtures that mix. And if you see, we end up with a double replacement reaction of two products. So I went over that in the practice, so I'm not going to go over that one again. But I will go over this next one and try to give you with a little bit more detail. So here we have sodium chloride. And sodium chloride is also going to mix with aluminum chloride. So we have these two substances. Now, what we're really trying to get you to do is understand what's happening at the atomic level. And so if you look at the top up here, at the very top, there are these charged particles. These are the charges of the substances in their compounds. And what happens is when you take things like sodium chloride, that's this one right here, and you throw it in water, this is just table salt, by the way. The table salt dissolves. It dissolves into its constituent charged pieces. And so sodium chloride will break apart into sodium, that's this piece right here, and chlorine, that's this piece right here. And they're going to be floating around in that solution. The same thing happens to aluminum chloride. So here we have aluminum chloride right here. Now aluminum chloride will break apart into aluminum, which is right here and also into chlorine, which is the one right below it. So we've got a lot of chlorine particles floating around. Now, when these go through a double replacement reaction, they're going to switch their partners up. This positive sodium right here and this negative chlorine right here are going to switch partners. Now, if you look here, we're not going to see much of a difference. And that's because when sodium when sodium is going to go and mix with the other substance, it's just chlorine. So that's the only other thing it can mix with. So this sodium right here and this chlorine right here are going to mix together. And this aluminum and this chlorine are going to mix together. So in this one, nothing really changed. And that sometimes happens. So here we have NaCl and AlCl3. And the reason it's AlCl3 is because we need three chlorines in order to counteract the one aluminum, which is worth positive three. All right, let's do the next one now. I'm not going to lie. I think that one might have caused more confusion, but let's keep trying things out to see if we're starting to understand. So bear with me. All right, this next one, we've got sodium hydroxide. That's right here. Remember, when sodium hydroxide is put in water, it breaks apart into sodium and hydroxide that's right here so these two positive and negatively charged pieces are floating around in my solution now we're going to mix that up and we're going to mix it with another compound we're going to mix it with aluminum chloride i'm going to color this one blue and so aluminum chloride remember is made out of aluminum and chlorine now again, they're going to switch their partners, and we always make sure that the positive thing goes with the negative thing. So this sodium right here is no longer going to be attached to this hydroxide. It's going to instead attach to the chlorine. Now look at their charges. We've got a positive one sodium and a negative one chlorine. Therefore, all we need to do to put them together is just have one of each. So Na, and there's one of those, and Cl, and there's one of those as well. So that's one substance. That's the sodium attaching to this chlorine. They're doing a double replacement. Now, this aluminum is going to attach to this hydroxide here. Now, look at the charges. Aluminum is plus three, and hydroxide's a minus one. So we're not just going to do ALOH. We can't do that. Because hydroxide is a smaller charge, we need three hydroxides in order to counteract that one aluminum. So it's going to be NaCl for the first thing, and then AlOH3 for the second thing. Because it's a positive three charge and a negative one charge, we need three of those negative one charges. 
All right, let's go through the next one, kind of the same process. Again, we've got aluminum chloride that's made out of aluminum and chlorine. And then the other thing we have is sodium nitrate. So sodium nitrate is made out of sodium right here and nitrate, which is right there. So again, notice that we always have positives meeting with negatives. This sodium right here and this nitrate are meeting, and notice it's a one-to-one. -one. And this aluminum is meeting with this chlorine, and that's a one-to-three ratio, AlCl3. Now they're going to switch their partners. This sodium right here is going to come up and meet with this chlorine again, because that's the only thing it could do. It can only meet with a negative charge. So the sodium and this chlorine are going to meet up. So we just have, oh, where's my thing? Again, sodium chloride. Notice that all of these that start with sodium are all going to basically be doing the same thing. That sodium is always going to mix with this chlorine in every single one of these instances. So I can go ahead and fill out that first thing basically for all of them. It's the second thing that's really going to change up. So for this one right here, sodium nitrate and aluminum chloride, this aluminum is going to meet with this nitrate. And again, it's a positive 3 and a negative 1. This aluminum is positive 3 and nitrate's negative 1. So just like the other things that are positive 3 and negative 1, it's going to be aluminum and then nitrate. We need three of those. So it's AlNO3, 3. All right, how about this next one? So this next one's sodium phosphate. So instead of it being nitrate, this time it's phosphate. So positive Sodium, negative chlorine, we already got that right here. Now we've got aluminum and phosphate. Hey, look, the charges are positive 3 and negative 3. That means that you only need one of each type. So aluminum and phosphate, we only need one phosphate. I'm not going to put in parentheses with any number outside because we only need one of them. If you would like to put it in parentheses, you're welcome to, just to signify that that's a polyatomic ion. But that's typically not how you find it. All right, last one. Same thing, we've got aluminum chloride, that's aluminum chlorine, but this time we have sodium, that's the same thing, and sulfate, that's this thing right here. All right, so do the double switcheroo again. We've got sodium and chlorine, we already wrote that down here. That's these two things meeting up in the solution. And now we've got aluminum and sulfate. So aluminum is positive 3 and sulfate is a minus 2. Both of those go into 6. That's very similar to the very first problem here that I went over in the practice. But that means that we need two aluminums and we need three sulfates in order for this to work out. So it's very similar to the first one with aluminum carbonate. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, all we're doing is we're taking these things and we're putting them in a solution and they mix. Their ions break apart into these pieces up here, both positive and negatively charged pieces, and then they do the double switcheroo. So go ahead and finish this document and check the answer key when you're done. We want to make sure it's all correct and that you're doing the right thing. Don't just copy the answer key. The point is not just to finish the assignment. The point is to understand it. But good luck. I want you guys to spend some time and really try to understand what's going on here.